With Moses and Elijah nigh, the incarnate Lord holds converse high, and from the cloud the Holy One bears record to the only Son. For our daily prayer, we use the order of morning prayer found on page 235 in the Lutheran Service Book or page 024 in the middle section of Treasury of Daily Prayer. Let us pray. Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Now it happened that as Jesus was praying alone, the disciples were with him. And he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. But others say Elijah, and others that one of the prophets of old has risen. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, the Christ of God. And he strictly charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And he said to all, If any one would come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? 
For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed, when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Now about eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they became fully awake they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Charles St. Ange. And so Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you truly, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. I have seen the kingdom of God come. After all, Jesus meant what he said, and I believe that I have seen that kingdom. But how can that be? Well, this verse from Luke chapter 9, verse 27, is in some ways a very good midterm exam for the disciples and for us who have been reading the Gospel of Luke. It's a check to see if we've kept up so far with what Jesus has been teaching. And what he's been teaching is about the kingdom of God. Well, what is the kingdom? Part of the problem with understanding what Jesus is talking about is that word itself, kingdom, when what Jesus is really talking about is the reign of God, the rule of God, not some geographic space, but how it is that God impacts a sinful, fallen human race with himself. Where is the kingdom of God? Jesus says the kingdom, the rule, the reign of God is where his son is and where his son is living and active. And it happens when we trust that God is accomplishing his will through his son, Jesus Christ, in the places and ways where Jesus says it is accomplished. And where Jesus says it's accomplished is in the cross. Where Christ's word about the cross is proclaimed, where it's understood, where it's taken up by people, there is God's rule in the world. There is the reign of God. These verses from Luke chapter 9 are really all about the word, through which God's rule comes and where God's kingdom is found. Peter says to Jesus, You are the Christ. Jesus urges his disciples to not be ashamed of himself or his words. In the midst of the beautiful vision of transfiguration that almost blinds Peter and James and John and the appearance of Moses and Elijah on top of a mountain with Jesus, the most important thing is the word to the disciples from the Father. Listen to him. Listen to Christ's word. Listen to how it is that God's kingdom is coming and how it is that I am reigning through this son of mine, who is taking into himself the sins of the world and taking them to a cross. The reality is that when God's reign comes into our fallen world, the world, Satan, and the demons do everything they can to fight against it. They belittle it. They attack it. They even crucify it if they can. C.S. Lewis once compared the rule of God in the world to God landing his son behind enemy lines and defeating the enemy at his own game in a rebellion against those who think they are in charge and who really run the kingdom. 
Christ shares a simple word with his disciples about the rule of God. It comes through a cross. It comes through suffering. We have a new resurrected life in Jesus, but that life is hidden from the world. What the world sees is pain. I have seen God's kingdom come. I've seen it come when the word of Christ is read and preached. I've seen it in people who have been washed and brought into the rule of God. I've seen it as people have gathered around a table set even in the presence of our enemies by God. I've also seen many who confess that they would never deny Jesus, that they would have stood by his cross. And yet when Christ shares his word, when he sets the table, they're nowhere to be found. Because the world wants God's rule, God's reign and kingdom to come in terror and power, in bright lights, in a Moses and Elijah standing on either side of Jesus on top of a mountain. The world and our sinful nature are not prepared for how God's rule truly comes, in the weakness of a spoken and poured and eaten word. We all want to stay on the mountain of transfiguration and say, surely this is God's kingdom. But God's kingdom is found where the cross is taken up and we follow our Jesus on the plain, because it's on the plain where Jesus is. I have seen old and young, English, French, Spanish, and Chinese speaking, rich and poor, white and black, and every color in between, gathering to treasure the transfigured and crucified and resurrected word. I have seen them take up the cross and follow after Jesus. And so I can say with true and pure confidence, I have seen God's kingdom come, even before I have tasted a physical death. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let us pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the for joining us for morning prayer. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you.